challenges, and to their credit, they prayed it through, and Chris has agreed to come on and fill the spot on the eldership that we need to have filled at this moment. So, just relax for a few minutes. I'm going to ask Chris and Trina to come up, and I think all the children are Madison and Evan are going to come on. And then I'm going to ask, uh, we have some other elders in our midst. Jeff Delano is come, going to come forward. Rob, you're going to come forward. Just going to ask you guys to come on up. Jeremy, okay, good. Jeremy's going to come up. Too. Jeremy Ward, Jeff Delano, Rob Probro. They're all elders here at North Reader. They're just not officially serving at this point. And I thought, wouldn't it be great to just, as a, just ask you guys to stand just for a minute. Wouldn't it be great just, and it just, just you guys understand we have some really great leaders. So we, I mean, our BBS workers, we just have some great servant leaders. But I've worked shoulder to shoulder with, with, with these folks, and they're, they're just simply the best. And I think it's important to understand as we're having to transition out of a staff member because God is calling her to, a, to another challenge. I think it's incredible how God, the same day, allows us. We're going to ordain Chris Salton into the eldership right now. And, and how you can see that God is providing some incredible leadership for North to do. We are truly blessed. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to ask Brad if he would. What we do is we just kind of have a charge that we want to read. We're going to read this to Chris, but it's it's applicable to Trina and his wife and his three children. Then we're going to ask Chris if he would just kneel. And I'm going to ask all the folks on stage here to lay their hands on Chris, and then we're going to pray for him. We're going to ordain him into the ministry, into the, uh, into the eldership. So just kind of relax. Got a couple more minutes, Brad, if you would read that charge and then we'll pray. The Apostle Paul, the man who blessed to say regarding elders and deacons, used a significant expression in 2 Timothy 2 8. Remember Jesus Christ. May you ever remember him who you have confessed as your Lord and Savior, who has called you to himself and now sends you forth to be his elder. Remember belong to Him. You are not your own. You have been bought with a price. Therefore, make your ministry an offering to Him. Remember Jesus and His words. Let them dwell in your heart that you may discover that truly He is the words of eternal life and that His words not only have the power to transform your life but the lives of this congregation. Remember Jesus who came to seek and to save that which he was lost to give his life as a ransom for the many. Make redemption and growth for the persons your first objective in your role as elder. Remember Jesus, who went about doing good, who came to minister, not to be ministered unto. There's much good to be done in your lifetime if you are willing to pay the price without being concerned over who gets the credit. Let me repeat this. You can do so much in your lifetime you are willing to pay the price, and please never be concerned over who gets the credit. Remember Jesus, who went to the cross in complete surrender to God's will, who, and who may many times said, He who would come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. For whoever saves his life shall lose it, but he that loses his life for my sake shall find it. There is no discipleship without a cross. And there's no eldership without the cross. Remember Jesus, who had perfect faith in man, even though he knew what was in there. He always looked upon people in terms of the possibilities. Remember Jesus, who loved people, all kinds of people. He loved them because they were the children of his Father. He came not to condemn them, but to love them. Therefore, before you can effectively carry out your role as an elder, you must have faith people and love them devotedly. Remember Jesus, who came preaching and teaching and has commanded you to go preach and teach. You are men of the church, spokesmen for God. Therefore, the church becomes a distinctive symbol, 
come to it often with a sense of urgency to rekindle the fire of the gospel in you. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. Remember Jesus, who had perfect faith in God as expressed through dis discipline, prayer, and the study of the Bible. Your effectiveness will depend upon the way you draw upon these divine resources. Remember Jesus, who loved the church and gave himself for it. It was he who said, I will build my church, make sure that the church belongs to him and is dedicated to carrying out his purpose and will. The church is the living, living, visible body of Christ in the world today. Apart from this, the church has no right to exist, nothing to preach. It is merely a needless burden. Remember Jesus meets the needs of every human heart. Therefore, bring the hearts of men to the heart of Christ. Remember Jesus, and you will fulfill the purpose of your calling as an elder at Northview Christian Church. There's no greater call for a lay person than to be called in the eldership. Chris, I know you understand that. I know you and Trina have prayed this through. I just, I know you understand the seriousness how much we need committed leaders, and I'm thrilled. Uh, I just thank God has prepared you for this moment. Trina, I'm so grateful for your support and for your family, for, for your children. Uh, I think God's going to do great things for you. Here's what I'd like to do. Uh, this is the whole church thing, so I'm going to ask the whole family. Let's go down, down front. Uh, I'm going to ask everybody. Come on, let's go. Let's, let's all go down. Let's all come down. We're, a big, we're one big family here, so here's what I'd like to do. Chris is going to kneel. I'm going to pray. I want everybody to come up. Everybody. I want everybody. Everybody from the back, if you're standing against the wall back there, every, I want everybody just to come on up. We're just going to gather right here. We're going to, we're going to symbolically lay hands on Chris and Trina and his family. Not, you guys don't have to kneel. We are going to ask Chris to kneel. Come on up. Get uncomfortable again. Get, get up here. This is so important. And this is so serious. And, and being a leader in God's church is so serious. Being a committed Christian is so serious. And, and Satan doesn't like it. Satan wants to attack us. Satan is going to try to attack Chris and his family. But I'm going to ask you to pray for strength and for protection and for guidance around him and around Trina and the kids as they be, begin serving with us in this official capacity. All right? Would you pray with me that way? And then would you pray for yourself? Would you check yourself? If you're not being attacked right now in some way, maybe you need to check the one with them. So let's pray. And then we'll, then we'll just, we'll close, we'll be dismissed, and just ask the band to sing while we're, while we're leaving. Father, sometimes I wonder where the next leader is going to come from. And then all of a sudden, they appear. They make themselves known. You make them known to us. God, I just believe that that's what you've done in the life of Chris Saul. That God, you have prepared him for this moment that he and Trina have really duly considered this commitment that they're making, they understand the gravity of it, they understand the seriousness of it, they understand that this church and, and so many other churches around the world have the greatest message, the most needed message in the world, and that's the love, mercy, and grace given to us through the sacrifice of Christ. I just want to pray, God, for a hedge of protection around Christmas and Trina and the family. I want to pray for wisdom and discernment and guidance for Chris. I want to pray for your blessing upon him and his church. God, as we gather around him as just a large family to support him, but as we also, God, come to you and ask for you to encourage us and protect us because we're serious about what we believe. So God, as we ordain Chris, solemnly and humbly as an elder here in Georgia. 
we just ask for your blessing. We just ask for your Holy Spirit to just permeate our church. For your Holy Spirit to just be well with this family. Help them to be able to live with power and help them to be able to live an overcoming life as a leader. Father, help them to always be an example. Father, help them always to say no to the wiles of Satan. And always say yes to you. Because God, we are doing the most serious work that can be done. So Father, bless Christ. We thank you for his life. We just ask you to use him in an incredibly abundant way to carry more to you. And Father, I know that he will and we will give you all the praise and glory. We pray all these things in the name of Jesus Christ.